Welcome to Family Church. I am Pastor Mike. It is great to see you in all of our chat rooms there today. Real quick, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click that bell so you can get notified when we go live. Today, I want to test your wits. I want to see how smart you are and your ability to remain focused and see if you can outsmart me this morning. All right? Deal? All right. So I think we've all seen this kind of trick before. Piece of paper, middle cup. Where was it at? Middle cup, all right? I want you to remain focused on this cup to see where it ends up. I want to see who can figure this out when it's all done. Ready? We're going to start moving it. Focus. Focus on that cup. Where did that cup go? Do you see it? You still know where it's at? Right there, yep, you got it. Still moving, still going. Come on, change direction on you. Still following it? Okay, few more twists and turns here to see if you got it. And stop. Comment down below. Is it in the left cup? Is it in the center cup? Is it in the right cup? I'll wait. Go ahead. Comment. All right. If you said left cup, incorrect. If you said center cup, you are correct. All right. Who got it right? Comment down below. Say, I'm a smarty pants. Okay. Now, if you didn't get that right, that's okay. Did you notice anything else that was happening in the room around the room while we were moving those cups did you notice that I grew hair did you notice that did you notice a purple dinosaur walking through the room did you notice that my glasses changed from clear to black? And did you notice how handsome I am? All right, all right. We're going to talk today about the power of focus. How many of you online right now think that you are amazing multitaskers? Who's a multitasker? Are you a multitasker? Yeah. Believe it or not, there is no such thing as being a great multitasker. You know what you really are? You're multi-distracted. You're multi-distracted. You get bored doing one thing for very long, so then you go and do other things. Your focus, your ability to focus, is actually only the size of your fingernail when you're zooming in. So as you zoomed in your attention to these cups because you wanted to prove Pastor Mike wrong, you wanted to get it right, you were so intent on following that piece of paper in those cups around the table, you didn't see my glasses change. You didn't see the purple dinosaur walk through the room. You may have caught the wig. We knew that was going a little too far, but maybe you didn't. Maybe you didn't see that happen, all right? We say that we're good multitaskers, but we're not. We're just multi-distracted. See, it's a brain thing. Your brain can only truly focus on one thing at a time. You were focusing on my hands and not the background behind me, not my face, not my hair. You wanted to win, so you were only focusing on the cups, and it can become so easy to focus on the wrong things. So easy to focus on the wrong thing. You get so fo it can become so easy to get focused on the wrong things. You make a decision. You decide there's something you want to do or something you want to buy. And you become so focused on that thing that you want that instead of seeing the thousand warning signs that are telling you not to do it, not to buy it, you can't see all those things because you're focused on what you've already decided. You were focused. 
right now, it can be so easy to get focused on what's wrong around us, on the things that are negatively impacting us. And we're ignoring all the great things that God is doing in the midst of what you're focusing on. Right now, we need to switch focus. We need to change focus, just like on a camera lens. We can just rotate the lens a little bit and we can change our focus. We need to be focused on what the Bible says is true. Not what the news says is true, not what your neighbor says is true. What does the Bible say is true? Here's a fact, if you spend more time watching the news than you do reading your Bible or listening to good teaching sermons like yours truly, you will focus on what's wrong. Philippians 4.8 tells us this. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Paul tells us to focus on what is good in tough times. He says, focus on what is true. That's how he starts. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, what, what is true right now? What is true? What is the truth, right? We're sitting back. I don't know what the truth is. There, there was a, um, a news report that came up that had a picture of people at the beach and come to find out it was the same picture that they said was on the LA beach and the uh, Florida beach. Which one is true? How do I know what truth is? In John 17, 17, it says this. Jesus is speaking, he says, the word of God, the Bible, is truth. The word of God, the Bible. How much of that are you consuming right now? How much scriptures are you consuming? How much of the word of God are you consuming at this time? What are you focusing on? Are you focusing on what is true, what is noble, what is right, what is pure, what is lovely, what is admirable, what is excellent, what is praiseworthy? Focus on these things. Now watch this. Brain science now knows that your actual focus, I think I said this earlier, your actual focus is the size of your fingernail. So, have you ever lost your car keys in your house somewhere or wherever? And you're searching frantically for those car keys because they're not where you believe you left them last. Or maybe they're not. Maybe someone in the house moved them. And you're frantically looking for it because you've got to leave the house right now. And so you're searching all over. But as you get panicked and as you get excited about trying to find what you're looking for, your focus actually narrows. It gets smaller and smaller. And someone says, oh, here they are. They were right there on the kitchen table. You overlooked them five times. You looked right past them, and the truth is, you didn't even see them. My mom would say it to me like this when I was looking for something around the house. She said, Mike, it was right there. If it was a snake, come on, finish it. You know what it is? It would have bit you, right? If it was a snake, it would have bit you. But the, the more uh, um, like you're looking for something, your focus narrows and narrows. And the narrow your focus gets, check this out, the more high definition it is. So the narrow the focus, the clearer, the more high definition it is. And the ver so the very thing that you're looking at, I'm focusing on this cup, it becomes clearer and clearer and clearer. Maybe you've said, well, I don't understand the Bible. I've tried reading it. It's because you haven't focused on it hard enough. Haven't spent enough time in it. 
the more time you spend in the word, the more focused on it you become, the clearer it is. Right now, when all these things are competing for our attention, we need to focus on what is true, what is right, what is noble, what is of a good report. Amen? Today, I want to share my time with preaching. Pastor Josh came to me and says, Hey, Pastor Mike, I see that you're working on this idea. I've got some great information that will go along with that. So right now, I'm going to turn this over to Pastor Josh. Come on, Pastor Josh. That was some good stuff, Pastor Mike. And while Pastor Mike was talking about this idea of focus... It made me think of a brand new piece of technology recently created by NASA. Now, I got to be honest, by releasing this piece of technology here live, I'm putting myself at danger. So don't say anything if you're watching this at home. Don't mention it that I'm doing this because, please, I need to be safe. So this piece of technology, I'm going to do it in slow motion. Catch it. It's called a magnifying glass. And what a magnifying glass does is really simple. Whatever you hold a magnifying glass over, it magnifies it. It makes it seem larger. So how would you use this piece of technology that's brand new to us? If you're reading a newspaper and it's too small, bam, magnify it. If you're using your computer, why would you scroll in to zoom? Why would you zoom in? Just bam, hold a magnifying glass over your computer and the words seem bigger. Whatever you're doing, if you can't see it too well or the print is too small, when you use this magnifying glass, it will automatically appear bigger. Well, today I want to give you a little secret. That in our lives, that we've all been given our own magnifying glass called focus. I'm going to say that again. We've all been given our own magnifying glass called focus. Because in life, whatever we focus on is going to appear bigger. Whatever we focus on is going to be magnified. Let's, let's make this practical. Say you got sick with a disease, and that's all you think about. You're up late at night thinking about this disease. All you do is research this disease. All you think about is this disease. That disease is going to look to be what's biggest in your life right now. Say you are learning something new. And maybe as you're learning, you're getting caught up. You're having a tough time. Maybe you're trying to learn something from school. And this is all you think about. If that's all you think about, that's what's going to seem biggest in your life. Maybe, maybe somebody hurt you five years ago. 10 years ago, 20 years ago, maybe somebody hurt you this morning. If all you focus on is what that person did to you, they're going to seem to be what's biggest in your life right now. Because whatever you focus on is going to be magnified and going to look the biggest. And while we've seen how magnification and how focus can become our greatest weakness, that same principle applies where magnification can become our greatest strength. If we magnify the right thing, it can empower us and help us to move forward. In Psalm 34, verses 1 through 3, it says this, I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak his praises. I will boast only in the Lord. Now I want you to connect to this next part. And if you're not paying close attention, pay close attention to it, because this is powerful. It then says this, let all who are helpless take heart, which means be encouraged. It then says, come, let's tell of the Lord's greatness. Let us magnify his name together. Let us magnify his name together. Now the writer of this psalm, his name was David. You might know him as King David or the shepherd boy David, the guy that killed the giant named Goliath. And David had some great moments in his life. But this psalm where he says, let us magnify the Lord together, it was not written about a good time of his life. He actually wrote this psalm, this guy that killed giants, this guy that was anointed to be a king, this guy wrote this psalm about a time when he had to let spit run down his beard and he had to act like a crazy man so that he would not be killed. This was not written in a good time of his life. 
It was written in a bad time of his life. But even though he was in a bad time, his response was, let us magnify the name of the Lord. Let us magnify the name of the Lord. And we can learn from David in this moment of his life through this writing that he did. Because maybe the coronavirus is driving you crazy right now. Maybe you feel like you're stuck at home and you're getting stir crazy. If you're having a hard time with this virus, I want to encourage you to do this. Say this, let us magnify the Lord together. Maybe you're trying to help your kids with their homework. You've become a teacher overnight and the schoolwork has 13 steps to solve the problem. What is two plus two? And it's frustrating because it doesn't make sense to you. Let us magnify the name of the Lord together. Maybe you've entered into a time of financial hardship because of the virus going on. We've never seen something like this. Let us magnify the name of the Lord together. Maybe you got laid off from work yesterday or last week or a few weeks ago. Let us magnify the name of the of the Lord together. Whatever situation you're going through right now, plug it in. Let us magnify the name of the Lord because whatever you magnify is going to seem greatest. Whatever you magnify is going to seem to be the biggest. And if we magnify God and magnify his word, like Pastor Mike was saying, God is going to look bigger and we're going to realize and know that God is bigger than any situation that we're going through right now. And I will admit, yes, we are in uncertain times. Yes, we are living in the middle of the history books that are being written. Yes, we are seeing something that we've never seen before. But in the midst of everything that is changing, we can have this one truth that stands where we can still say, no matter what's going on, let us magnify the name of the Lord. As we focus on the things of God, like Pastor Mike was saying, those things that are true, noble, the things that are pure, lovely, the things that are excellent, we'll be reminded of who God is in our lives. We'll be reminded that he is our strength, that he is our provider, even in these uncertain times. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 1, it says this, Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, Set your sights, or like we could say, set your focus on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. To close this out, in the middle of everything that's changing, I want to remind you that Jesus is still sitting on the throne, that Jesus is still working on our behalf, that God is still moving on our behalf. That the coronavirus did not kick Jesus off the throne. It did not cancel the work that Jesus finished on the cross. So in these tough times today, in these uncertain times, I want to remind you, magnify the name of God. Because whatever we focus on is going to seem biggest. All right. Thanks, Pastor Josh. That was amazing. So to close this out today... What are you focusing on? What are you magnifying in your life? If you feel like troubles are getting bigger and bigger, it's probably because you're magnifying them, right? As a kid, my my son, he fell in love with the song, uh, Magnify Your Name. And he would walk around the house, Magnify your name, magnify your name, I lift high. And I magnify your name. Maybe you need to magnify the name of Jesus Christ in your home today. Maybe you're watching this and you find yourself far from God. You can't magnify God because there isn't a God in your life. We want to connect you to a true and living God. Like Pastor Josh said, Jesus Christ is alive. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he wants to be part of your life right now. So if you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we want to offer that to you today. We do that with a simple prayer, by asking him into our lives. And that prayer goes like this. Dear God, say it with me. Dear God, I come to you. I come to you. 
just like I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. Jesus, I invite you into my life to change me and to make me new. Thank you for accepting me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Congratulations. That's amazing. If you prayed that prayer for the very first time today, in whatever chat room you're in, would you type JESUS in all cap letters right now in the comment section below? One of our team members would love to follow up with you and get you started in your first week uh, as a Christian in your walk with the Lord.